Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your pal Wes, and today we're taking a look at the Neo Trinity from Bastel Instruments. <laughs> Now, if you were familiar with the original CV Trinity from Bastel, then you already know it's a day of celebration because the original was one of the most slept on modulation and performance hub modules. The Neo Trinity is a collection of CV utilities that has been fine tuned for performance and ease of use. So it's fast, it's powerful, it's fun. This little 8 HP powerhouse allows you to generate a ton of musical ideas really quickly, as well as interface with the rest of your modular or CV capable gear in really meaningful and fun ways. You've got six outputs, which can each individually be configured as either LFOs, envelope or trigger sequences, as well as CV offset or knob recording style sequences. Two of those outputs, E and F, have their own dedicated input that can be configured to respond to all sorts of different modulation in different ways, depending on which mode you're using. The other four share this meta input, which can also be configured per channel to respond to any incoming voltage. The key way that you're gonna interface with this module is through either recording your knob movements, tapping in triggers, or a combination of both of those things at the same time. You can quantize voltages, you can quantize timing, you can save your sequences if you get something cool across six different banks, you can mute channels, you can change the voltage output ranges, you can decide whether your channels are unipolar or bipolar. It features an incredibly robust and super immediate generative functionality for its trigger sequences that is just gonna keep you coming back for more. Let's get a quick overview in and then we'll get to some patching and you know, we'll learn some stuff and who knows, maybe we'll even have some fun. Big buttons, buttons are bigger. So rec obviously is gonna be, you know, for recording in your triggers. If you hold it and you hit this trigger button, it's gonna record in those triggers. If you hold rec and turn the knob, it's gonna record that knob motion, right? If you double tap rec, it's gonna delete the knob recording motion that you've recorded in there. And the uh, shift button here, which is our trigger thing, if you wanna delete your triggers, you double tap that, same sort of paradigm. Now, if you hold rec here, you're gonna be choosing the length of your sequence per channel. So if we're on channel A and we long hold rec, we've got an eight step sequence here. We can change that to 64. It even says length next to the rec button. So, you know, that's your kind of like little mental cue there. The panel is admittedly very dense with words and letters and stuff like that. So that's why I'm taking just a second to explain some things. And this next thing that I explain, very important. So keep your peepers peeled, right? Shift button does a lot, okay? The first thing that it does is select your shape per channel. So if we're on A and we're in envelope mode, then we hold shift and we can select, you know, this decay envelope. The triangle is kind of like a shark fin very wave. If you're familiar with the soft pop envelope generator, it's, it's basically that, which is freaking rad. And then you've got an attack and a pulse, you know, gate essentially, which is also very rad. In envelope mode, you've got two other options here. E is retrig, so if you're tapping in a sequence and then you know you want retrigs to happen, then E is gonna turn that on or off for you. And then F is kind of universally sort of like the smoothing or slewing functionality. So if we turn that on on envelope, then we get kind of like a slewed motion out of the CV outputs. And also if you go into the inputs, you could just use it as a straight slew 
which is also sick as heck. The other thing that the shift button does is everything that's in silver on the panel here. So I just want to draw your attention to a few important things in my opinion. If you hold down the shift button, you are going to see this reset light come on. And that is going to be on every single mode. And that just means that you either use the reset input um, jack here or not, you know? So if it's on and there's a, some signal present at the reset jack, it's gonna reset your sequence. If you don't want that to happen, you can turn it off per channel. And that's pretty sick. Now, if you're in LFO mode, you can also hit this sync button and it's gonna clock sync your LFO. That's only in LFO mode because everything else is essentially synced to the clock anyways. But outside of that sync mode in LFO, you're just a free, free wheel in LFO, just out and about, you know, free, free range roving, roving ranges freely of voltages, whatever. Okay, channels are pretty easy. You know, obviously just click them, it's gonna select the channel. If you click and hold, you've got two options here, right? You've got this clock button that's sync on, and that's gonna be your quantization for timing. So if you don't want quantization, you click it off. If you do want quantization, you click it on. Quanta quantization. And then underneath that is your polarity. Bipolar with the light on, unipolar with it off, and that is gonna be negative five to positive five, or negative two to positive two, or zero to five, or zero to two volts, depending on the range you select, which we'll get into in a little bit. Once you're in the channel that you want, you click this button to, you know, change between your different modes. You got LFO, envelope, and CV. And each channel can be a different one, which is pretty nifty. If you want to mute a channel, you hold mute, and then click that channel, and then the light's gonna go off. It's muted, obviously. If the light's on, it's not muted. Easy peasy, right? Uh, the bank button is gonna allow you to change between your banks. I mean, that's also pretty easy here, right? And then this clock button is gonna bring you to the clock channel. Clock channel is also pretty self-explanatory. You can turn the knob in the clock channel and it's gonna speed things up. You can also tap in a clock, but you're tapping in quarter notes here, so. You know, just be aware of that. You can also, if you're getting a uh, external clock, you can choose between the dividers with the channel buttons. You check out the manual for the dividers, but usually I find that uh, uh, E is like times four and D is just like straight clock. You know, those are the ones that in my opinion are the most nifty. You can also hold shift and save and it'll click and flash at you save. And that's pretty nifty. One more thing that the shift button does is it changes your meta input mode here. You see VCA, trig, sample, and hold there on the silver side. So if we hold shift, we can select through a couple different modes. Now, I just wanna point out that with the top two lights on, you are in attenuated positive CV mode. Actually, positive CV is with the lights bright, positive attenuated is with them uh, dimmed, and then you've got inverted, for the bottom two and inverted attenuated for the dim. And then you got VCA, trig, sample and hold, which I will get into a little bit later. Hey, what's up? It's Editing Wes. And I realized that I kind of forgot to explain how to use one of the best parts of Neo Trinity here, which is the generative functionality. So uh, you come on over here. Come here, get, come here, come here. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how this is done here. Come here, C come here. Come here, come here. The generative functionality in the Neo Trinity is super powerful and you can use it in any mode, but I feel like it shines best in envelope mode because what it generates is, is a stream of presses of the trigger button here, right? So all you gotta do to engage this is to hold rec and trig at the same time. And then once you do that, you're gonna have six banks of different types of generative triggers that you can you know, engage and step through and you can choose to create more dense patterns of triggers with the rate knob here. So what you do is you press down both of these little buttons here and then you spin the rate knob Some 
some generative triggers. You can clear them just like any other trigger pattern. Banks A, B, and C are kick, snare, and hi-hat style patterns, respectively. D is easy to remember because it is divider, right? So if we click onto D. We get divided clocks, right? So that's pretty easy to remember. Another really easy one to remember is Euclidean and random. You know, so E is Euclidean, E for Euclidean, F for random. If you use the generative mode in LFO, it's just going to put those LFO retrigs in there. And if you use it in CV mode, it's going to create those gate high style steps, right? So it's, it's pretty cool, pretty easy, pretty fun. One thing that you really got to be aware of when you're in generative mode is your pattern length here. Because obviously, if you've got a two step pattern, and you go into Euclidean mode, it's it's gonna just be, you know, obviously either one step or two steps. But then, you know, if you start to pop it up to 16, you get like, you know, more interesting patterns. Same thing with, of course, the uh, random there. And, you know, you could go to 32 or 64. I think it caps out at 16 steps, actually. I'll have to look at the manual and confirm or deny that probably right here. Um, but yeah, make sure you've got an eye on your step length, right? Or your sequence length, so to speak. Uh, the four and two are really good for divider channels, you know, especially if you want like more rhythmic variations. And then two more things I wanna key into here, then we'll get back to the video, is that you can sample the behavior of the trig button by reversing the order that you push the buttons. So if we wanted to record them in, you know, we hit record and go bop, 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 right? And it's gonna record those triggers in. Uh, and because we have a 64 length pattern, it's gonna, you know, take a second for those to come back here. And so if we want to just sample that, we can hold trigger and then press record and it's just gonna sample those triggers without recording them in, which is kind of cool, kind of nifty if you wanna, you know, just hear how they sound without recording them in. An additional thing that I forgot to mention in the main video, so I'll mention here right now, is that you'll see this sync light blink on just like that, and that means that you have reached the reset point for this channel sequencer, right? So if we were to make this sequence less than 64 steps, like let's say we were to make it four steps, you're gonna see this sync light pop on. So that's kind of like a visual indicator when you reach the end of your you know, sequence for the channel or the end of the length of the sequence, so to speak. So that's a bonus thing. And then the final thing that I forgot to talk about that I will now talk about is that you can shift your sequences around by holding rec and pushing plus or minus. This is really fun, especially in the Euclidean and generative modes because you can pop in a pattern in there. And then by continuing to hold rack, you can push plus and you can shift it forward in time. Or you can shift it back in time. So you can start to get sort of, you know, like off kilter sort of patterns there. And that's pretty nifty, right? You can clear those trigs out the same way you uh, clear anything out. All right, the quick recap to smush this into the folds of your brain, you hold rack and shift at the same time and you enter generative mode. A, B, C, and D, E, and F, those are gonna be your banks of generative triggers. A, B, C are gonna be, you know, uh, kick, snare, hi-hat, D for divider, E for Euclidean, F for frandom. When you see this little light blink, that means you're at the end of your sequence, so you can make longer sequences, and you'll see that light blink less or you can create shorter sequences. And you'll see that light blinking all the gosh darn time. And then if you wanna sample your tricks, you hold shift and you hit rec, you know? Or you can hit rec and hit shift and you can clear those out. And so let's go, let's put in a generative pattern from uh, bank E here. All right, cool, 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 cool. Back to main video Wes, he's gonna talk about some silver bubbles and some panel overview and some CV stuff, probably. OK. 
So that's basically the overview. Let's just recap things real quick here, just so we are, you know, getting that visual language of the module tucked in to the folds of your brain there, right? So basically anything that's got a silver little lining around it is gonna be your shift functionality. So that's stuff that's got, you know, the silver uh, bubble, let's say, right? And then anything that's just in silver is gonna be your rec functionality. So if we're on channel A, you know, these little numbers on the side, that's our length, and our little silver bubble is our shape, right? Easy peasy. So if we are in CV mode, then holding shift puts us into a little bit of a different zone here, right? So you can enable quantization by hitting D. You see there's a little Q there. And then you see pentatonic, diatonic, major, um, or whatever those stand for. I, I, I'm, what, look, do I look like a music major? No, I'm just some dude. Anyways, more lights equals more notes, essentially. And you can check the manual for kind of the different quantization modes. But for my money, I usually just leave them all off because I believe that that's like minor triad and th three notes is more than enough for me. But if I wanted more notes, you just turn on more lights here, right? And then also let's just address this real quick because we're here. The E button for CV is gonna choose your voltage range. So that's gonna set between five or two volts, right? Easy peasy, lemon, squeezy. And then F is also gonna do your smoothing, kind of just like every other uh, mode there. It's uh, F is for smooth, as in smooth. Before we get into some patching, let's just real quick talk about E and F, which have their own dedicated inputs. If we hold F, then we can you know, change the meta input here for their dedicated inputs. Same with E, bada bing, bada boom easy peasy. And then one last thing that I honestly forgot is, is if you hold the trigger and hit uh, copy paste or this bank button, you click it once real quick, a real quick click, then you have copied that channel. And then if you go to another channel and you hold down that button, then bada bing, bada boom, you have pasted that channel that you just copied. So yeah. That's how that works. You can very easily copy and paste channels. And you know what? It's pretty fun, it's pretty cool. All right, let's make some noise. Let's get into some patching because if you're anything like me, then you gotta see this in action to know like what the heck's really going on. So let's see it in action. All right, let's start a functional overview of the Neo Trinity. Let's go through the modes, show you how they work, show you why they're cool, and let's listen to some patches here, right? Starting with the LFO mode. Let's use this really simple patch I've got here, which is just the octave oscillator of pizza, going into the Akari, going into Aikido, as simple as it gets, and it just sounds. <laughs> just like that. Let's get into LFO mode by just clicking up till we've got, you know, LFO, we're on channel A, LFO. And we can tell that there's already data in here, like sequence data, because this little light is on, right? So let's double tap shift and double tap rec to get rid of all of that sequence data. So now channel A is just a simple, straightforward LFO. Let's go into the mod here of Akari. And we can obviously make that LFO go faster, slower with the rate. We can record that in. And we can re-trigger the LFO by holding rec and getting shift. This is an absolutely ridiculous sequence in there. Let's clear it. Let's get it out of here. Right? Right? And let's take a look at what else we could do. So we can hold shift to change our shape. We got a falling saw, we've got a triangle, we've got a rising saw, and we've got a nice, beautiful little pulse here, square wave. And then on top of all that, we got a nice random wave here, right? Right? 
Sounds good, baby. Sounds so nice and beefy. And if we hit Shift and F, it's gonna enable smoothing on these wave shapes, right? So, smoothing on, smoothing off. Right, so that is a pretty nifty little functionality. I actually really like it on the square wave, the smoothing on the square wave kind of gives us like a sort of like a trapezoid -y style, you know, wave there. Okay, but let's take a look at what else this shift button can do in LFO mode. If we hold it down, we've of course got reset, which is going to reset our sequence if there is a signal present at the reset. And then this is an LFO specific shift functionality. It's gonna enable tempo syncing for our LFOs. So what this means is if I click that button now, we're gonna get tempo synced LFOs. So let's take a listen. You'll notice that it'll kind of like snap to different divisors there, right? You hear that? As opposed to just being totally smooth. Tempo sync is really cool. I think it's really nifty functionality, especially if you want those kind of like Wazo style, you know, like. And of course you can use them to get nice, good tempo synced random, as well as use the square wave as like sort of a divider or a clock source for other things in your modular system, which makes this LFO mode just really versatile. Now, moving on along, if we hold the channel button, we of course get the bipolar switch here, which is gonna change this, see this green light is all green now? Turn that bipolar on, it's going green and red, which means it's a bipolar LFO. And then if we click the channel button, hold down and pop on that top one, the sync button or clock button, whatever you wanna call it, is gonna quantize our timing for our triggers, which is the reset of the LFO. So with tempo sync and quantized reset, you can get some really cool kind of like straight tempo synced waves. Okay, let's put all of this LFO information that we've just gained into a sort of patch here. Let's go to channel A, it's on LFO mode. Let's clear everything out that's in. We'll go into the, uh, let's go into the volt per octave of the Akari and then we'll check and see that it is unipolar. It's gonna be um, synced to the clock. Cool, we got a clock synced LFO there. It is on uh, decay mode. Let's put it on, uh, let's put it on triangle mode here. And... so much that I'm gonna hold A and hit bank real quick to copy it and go to B and then I'm gonna hold that till it pops in there and then we pasted that channel, right? So now let's take this and let's, uh, let's go into the VCA here. I like the way that sounds. So let's go to channel D and actually let's put it into envelope mode. And then we're gonna hit the generative mode by holding rec and trig. And we're in D and we're gonna, we're gonna want a, a square wave here. And then let's, uh, let's make the D is the divider channel. So let's make a nice little clock. That looks good. And then let's take that clock signal and go into the pocket operator, right? So now let's see if we can get a nice little pattern going here.
I think it's nice to hear it in context with a drum beat, right? Okay, so let's take channel C. Go to C. It's in LFO mode. Let's clear what's in there. And let's make it a random wave. Let's turn smoothing off. And let's, yeah, let's go into shape here. Oop, I clicked fold. It's clock synced, so that's good. Let's speed it up a little bit. Not that fast. And then let's record some resets in there. Actually, you know what? Let's get rid of those because we can use the generative functionality in LFO mode to just put in our resets for us. So let's go to Euclidean mode here. And then, uh, you know, make a pretty dense little pattern there. All right, so that was a quick overview of the LFO mode, and obviously, any channel can be an LFO, can be a nice, simple, easy peasy, slow breezy LFO, or it can be a complex, crazy, wacky modulation source, however you're feeling. So, use it to your heart's content. Let's check out envelope mode. All right, it's action envelope time. Let's set up a quick little patch here. I'm gonna use the main oscillator of the pizza in sort of a pseudo envelope mode. So what that means is that uh, this control knob there, <laughs> wow, that's really gnarly, uh, is just gonna, this is gonna, you know, basically be the VCA for our pizza here, right? You know, we can also use the VCA in the Aikido, but uh, yeah, we're just we're just gonna we're gonna do some fun envelope stuff here. I got an idea, right? I, I got a plan here. Let's also use the Akari in self oscillating mode, and we are gonna kind of create a little bit of a kick drum with you. We will come back to that full circle in just a tick. So let's get into this patch here, right? I'm gonna use channel A and I'm gonna go into the control here, turn up some of this modulation, and then let's just sample how this sounds by holding shift and tapping rec. It sounds like an envelope, right? So that's how we can sample these uh, envelope shapes. Obviously with the decay envelope, you're gonna get more decay. But if we go to this very shape envelope, which is a little bit different, it's very similar to the soft pop envelope generator, so on the right, we get, you know, sort of another sort of decay envelope. And on the left, we get this kind of shark fin little. Right? And then, of course, we've got rising attack envelope. And then, of course, we've got the pulse. Your rate is gonna kind of determine your pulse width here, right? So. The cool thing about envelope mode here is E is going to enable or disable retrig functionality here, right? So what that means is, is when we've got a sequence of triggers in the sequencer, then if retrig is off, it's not going to retrig if your envelope is interrupted by another trigger. So I can illustrate this in just a sec after I tell you about the F functionality, which is once again, kind of like a smoothing on these shapes.
and it really kind of turns the uh, pulse there into sort of just like an impulse, right? It's also just considered slewing here. So if you were to put a uh, voltage source into one of these channels via the meta input, it's gonna enable like a little bit of attack release slewing depending on your rate thing here. You can play around with that a little bit. I'll get into it in some of the patches down the way, but for right now, let's just get programming in a fun little sequence here. Let's have this decay envelope and go. And then once again, if we hold the channel button, we can enable reset as well as quantization sync, which is gonna be pretty important for envelope mode. Uh, and we're off to the races, baby. We can record in some knob movement. So let's get some more envelope action in here, right? Let's maybe make a kick drum with channel B and our Akari self-oscillating filter here, right? So let's go into the mod section here. We're gonna mute this real fast. And let's turn this channel on. So let's go to channel B. Let's turn it into envelope mode. Let's use this very shape and kind of All right, that's, uh, that's actually sounding pretty good. Let's turn the mod up a little bit. It's sounding more like a kick drum. Maybe a little bit more. All right, that is sounding like a kick drum here. And we've got a problem, which is uh, we need to modulate both the cutoff of the filter and the VCA. So let's quickly get a Euclidean generative pattern by holding shift and rec and we'll get it in there. Let's take a listen. All right, so that sounds pretty good. I like how that sounds, but we need some dynamic control. We need to control that VCA. So let's hold B and quick click bank and then go to C and long hold it and you'll see it kind of snap into uh, the copied, the paste. We pasted channel B onto channel C, uh, just an absolute duplicate. And then let's go into the VCA action here and turn this up. Now we can tune this kick drum a little bit more to our liking. We could also go to channel C and make a slightly different envelope that's still gonna be on the same grid there, right? All right, so there's our cool kick drum. One thing that I would love to see in maybe a future update for the Neo Trinity is the ability to somehow link channels because Kind of like a little bit of a bummer here is now if I make any changes to the sequence on B, I'm gonna have to copy them over to C again in order to keep this modulation. Or I could be, you know, not a heathen and use a stackable cable, but you know what? I don't really feel like doing that. I'm showing off the functionality here. Now we can use the Aikido to kind of give us a little bit of side chain action and bada bing bada boom, we've got a standard little kick and bass sequence here with all just envelopes, right? It's cool, I'm digging it. Let's use an envelope sequence on channel D to kind of modulate that, right? So let's use a random wave that's nice and smooth and very slow. triggers in there.
right, so let's take a look at that re-trigger functionality that I was talking about earlier here, right? So if we go back to channel A, which is our baseline channel, and we turn re-trigger off, let's take a listen to the before and after re-trig on, re-trig off, right? So this is re-trig off. You'll see that those longer envelopes just ring out entirely, right? Now let's just dump in a ton of a ton of triggers. See how the sequence has not really been affected too terribly? Now this is compounded by the fact that we are quantized synced here, right? Let's get this cable out of the way. We're quantized synced, we can we can tell by holding the channel and seeing that this light is on. So that means that our triggers are timing quantized, right? Easy peasy. Now, if I was to turn off retrig, or turn on retrig here rather, let's, let's take a listen to how the sequence changes. triggers in there now because the re-trigger is on so it's interrupting some of those sequences but what if I wanted this to sound like you know what if I wanted it to sound a little wacky right well then I would need to turn quantization off and now it's just playing back every trigger that I put in there right so I could now listen to the kick drum and have really terrible timing and go maybe like. And it's gonna absolutely just record that in unquantized. Now if I was to turn re-trigger off again. Moving on. Let's turn quantization on. Turn re trigger on. Envelope mode is really powerful on the Neo Trinity. I really, really enjoy it for the generative functionality and being able to quickly pile in just new sequences and especially to kind of wiggle them around while they're being generated on the fly. All right, that was a quick little look at envelope mode. So now let's move on to the beautiful, wonderful, amazing CV mode, which is honestly, one of the most powerful aspects of Neo Trinity. If this module only did one thing and it was CV mode, I would still be in love with it. There's a lot to look at here, so let's get into it. All right, let's make another really simple patch just to help illustrate the CV mode here, right? So same as the first one, we're just gonna go octave oscillator into a car AR filter into Aikido, which is our VCA and mixer. And let's take a listen here. Right, easy peasy. Let's get right on into it and go out of the channel A, which is on CV mode, and go into the volt per octave of the pizza here, right? So let's take a listen. Sounds like a CV offset, if I ever heard one. And that's because essentially it is. In just dead stock standard mode, the CV mode is just a CV offset. So we could very obviously record that in. And you'll notice that it's gonna sound kind of steppy, right? So let's get into the shift functionality of CV mode. If we hold shift, we've got F here. 
is gonna give us that smooth action back here, right? And then E is gonna be our range mode. So this is gonna switch between two volts and five volts, right? So this is two volt mode with the light off. And you'll notice that if we're in two volt mode, we get a little less range than in five volt mode, obviously, because it's three less volts. So, you know, sometimes that's pretty helpful. Like in this instance right here, where we really only want a few octaves of action here, and we can set the lowest note that we want with the pizza. And we can set the highest note. So right there is pretty much where I want to be. Right? So that's one use where the voltage range, kicking it in or out, is gonna be just super duper handy. The rest of the functions are very similar. If we hold the channel that we're on, we can change our quantization timing, right? And we can also uh, turn between bipolar or unipolar, which is also gonna be pretty helpful in CV mode, especially when you're gonna be interfacing with different modules and dialing in different voltage ranges here, right? So for this example, we're gonna just, you know, keep it on bipolar, we're gonna keep our quantization locked in there. And then if we hold shift, of course, the reset, you know, that's every channel. Shift, that reset means that if there's something happening at this reset, Jack, it's gonna reset the sequencer per channel. So we know that we can hold rec and spin this knob and record in, you know, knob voltage movement there. What does clicking shift do? Well, it shoots the voltage to the maximum allowed voltage, right? Which is, can be helpful and it can be pretty cool, especially if you're using this module in unison with, you know, like uh, maybe some other voltage processors or comparators. Um, I'm not gonna get super into <laughs> like use cases here because I don't have a lot of stuff that I can really illustrate that with at the moment. But if we were to get into self-patching here, think about all of the opportunities that it would allow you to, you know, um, if you were self-patching, let's say channel A into the meta input and then influencing the other channels, you could have this trigger trigger certain things, but then have your knob recorded movement that's at a lower voltage range do, you know, maybe something different here. If we hold shift and click D, we're gonna enable the quantizer mode here, right? Now you'll notice that all of these lights just kind of popped on when I hit D. They'll all pop off when I hit D again here, okay? So what these note is, the scale that you're in. You can see they're kind of down there, major, diapen, you know. And basically more lights means more notes and less lights means less notes. And this is going to be easier to hear than it is to talk about. So let's take a listen, right? So we're gonna make sure that we are quantizer on. And this is as many notes as we could possibly have. Get rid of some. Let's get rid of some more. And we've got smoothing on, so that's why it's kind of. there is a fun little voltage sequence, right? It's quantized, we can change the amount of quantization on the fly. But I kinda like the less notes sort of feel there. And as we saw earlier, if we were to enable smoothing, it's gonna kind of slew the quantization. So it's still gonna try to hit those notes, but it's going to kind of smooth 
the spaces in between them, which can be nifty if we were, let's say, at a much higher clock rate here. And then let's say we... So now we've got that kind of like, you know, sort of like uh, portamento style pattern in here. And if I was to go, and I'm gonna need a longer cable. If I was to go and start to put an envelope sequence into this bad boy here. Oh, there's already an envelope sequence in there. bit of a slide action in there and then let's uh, let's go ahead and automate that because that sounds really cool that little filter action right there let's go into the volt per octave here and let's set this up real fast here so we're on channel c and we want to have a low voltage range so we're going to pop it into two mode we don't want any quantization we don't want whatever movements in there so let's clear it out and we do want this to be bipolar. So let's turn on bipolar here. Whoopsie, that's not gonna be bipolar. We need to hold the channel and click that. And now we've got bipolar, which we could tell because we're getting red light in there. So now let's take a listen to this. of a sequence in 16. You can see by holding rec, we can change it to 64. Let's make sure we are smooth. Illustrates how CV mode can interact with envelope mode and just be fun as heck. For the heck of it, let's uh, let's get D in here. Is in LFO mode. Let's change it to random smooth. It's already on there for us. And let's uh, let's modulate uh, let's modulate this wave shape. And that is CV mode in a nutshell, right? You've got a lot of tools at your disposal to have a lot of fun with. You can make sequences up to 64 steps. You can keep them smooth or, you know, step them out, kind of uh, add quantization, whatever you want to do. It's super duper fun, incredibly useful. If, like I said before, if this module was just one thing and it was this one thing, I would be happy because having a knob recorder that is this easy to use and this fun and intuitive is, you know, it's <laughs> it's really unique and it's super cool. I love it a whole bunch and that's CV mode. There's one more thing I have to talk about and that is the meta mode. So let's get into it. In a nutshell, meta mode allows you to modulate the parameters of your channels kind of universally. So it's sort of like a macro input, but you get to set up per channel how you want that channel to react to the meta mode, right? So the first things first is how do we enable this? Well, because meta in is in a silver little box there, we hold shift and we click this meta mode, meta mode button, right? Easy peasy. Now the first four meta modes are gonna be denoted by these two lights going on here, right? Two lights at the top, two lights at the bottom. You can see there's a little plus and a little negative down there, but this is what they mean. Two lights on up top in the plus, sandwiching the plus there means positive voltage mode. That means that when you put a signal into the meta mode, it's going to 
basically modulate this knob positively, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, if we hold and click it again, they're gonna go dim up at the top, right? And that means positive attenuated. So this is just gonna kind of smush the voltage range that the meta input, you know, modulates basically. It's uh, just think of it as positive mode, but less. That's literally how it's described in the manual. Now the inverse of that, one more click, is inverted. It's gonna sandwich your negative voltage sign there. So that means that any voltage that you go into the meta input is gonna modulate this knob to the left or negative, right? And if we click it again, they're gonna go dim and that is inverted attenuated, which is the same thing. It just means less voltage range, right? So that's pretty nifty. Let's take a look at both of these modes just real fast. All right, we're gonna set channel A to the LFO mode. And we are gonna go bada bing A into, what do you know, the volt proctive input of our Akari again here, right? So let's take a listen. <laughs> So that's what that sounds like, easy peasy. So now let's get to, whoopsie daisy, let's get to positive mode here and let's use this handy dandy little fader guy here to illustrate what's going on in the meta input. So channel A, it's meta mode is on, we can tell by push and shift and it's on positive here, right? So this is what it sounds like. So that's pretty easy to conceptualize, right? This voltage is turning up and it's increasing the rate knob. It's moving the rate knob for us. It's modulating it for us. And this is only affecting channel A in this way because if we go to channel B, meta mode's not on, right? So if I turn this to LFO mode and I spin this all day, you'll see it's not, it's not increasing the voltage there because I haven't turned meta mode on for B, right? So easy peasy here, but A is just going ham there, all right? So now let's turn it on attenuated mode here, right? You'll see that it's not going as far into the LFO range as it could because it's attenuated, okay? So once again, pretty easy, pretty peasy. Now let's take a look at inverted mode here, right? So now we're in inverted mode. It's gonna make the LFO slower because it's inverting the voltage going in here, right? And then the same thing is gonna happen for attenuated inverted. It's just gonna take more voltage to get there. So that's positive, positive attenuated, inverted, and inverted attenuated, right? So those are pretty, pretty self-explanatory for the meta mode inputs here. Where things really get fun is when we go one more past those modes, and now we are in VCA, trig, and sample and hold, right? So VCA is going to act like a VCA, right? So basically your meta input here is now a VCA. So let's take a listen. See how there's nothing going on? I can control the level with this fader here, just like a VCA. The VCA mode is gonna be really handy for, let's say, transposing a CV sequence or dialing in the range of the voltage that you want precisely. Or you could use this as a really cool way to self-patch with like a random wave and, and so on and so forth, right? Now let's take a look at trigger, right? Trigger is going to not be able to really easily be shown with this little uh, fader here. <laughs> But you'll notice that when it hits gate high, it's gonna just basically give us a trigger. 
right? So it's gonna act the, the exact same way as this trigger button. This is gonna be super nifty if we were to, let's say, be in envelope mode here, and then let's take a listen, right? Now we can trigger a decay envelope. Let's make it kind of long here by just... Right, so this would probably be easier to show if we just went from clock in, or let's say we went from a different channel and we made a envelope sequence with the generative mode that was Euclidean and we'll set it to pulse and we'll set it really nice. So now you can see our pulse pattern here is going to trigger our channel A, right? So that's pretty nifty. And then we can also illustrate that we could use this mode here for something different. If let's say we wanted to do a uh, mm, mm, mm. inverted mode. This is not gonna work as well because you'll notice that we're using the same meta input, right? So this is me being dumb. Why don't we use channel D? which has its own dedicated input, excuse me, channel E, which has its own dedicated input there. So does F. So we could now use this fader, bada bing, to modulate E, and we could use this meta input from E to modulate A, right? This is where <laughs> meta input gets really, really cool and funky and fun. So for E, we hold channel E to change the meta input mode. So let's change this to, let's just say, let's change it to VCA here, right? And then let's have its normal mode be on envelope, and then we will do exactly what we did there before, and we'll just kind of have it be a pulse wave that is Euclidean based, and now we'll go into D here, right? Or E, excuse me, I keep on saying D. Now you'll notice that nothing is happening. That's because we're on VCA mode. So now, you see what's going on here? It's a little bit complicated, a little bit wiggy, because that's meta mode, baby. But our channel A is in envelope mode, and it is in trig meta mode. So that means that when meta input trigs hit this meta input, that it's gonna trigger the envelope on A. E is in meta input mode, or its own individual mode, is on VCA. And, whoopsie, I just changed it there. So now we can increase the amount of voltage with a VCA into input E. Or just cut it off completely. So now we've created a brand new control scheme with some self-patching here, right? I'm going to illustrate how self-patching can be even more fun in the next meta mode. So sorry for that like kind of complicated demonstration there, but if you get creative with meta modes, you're just going to have a blast with this module. So let's get into the last normal meta mode, which is sample and hold. And what sample and hold does is it turns the meta input into the trigger jack of a sample and hold. So when it gets a trigger, it's gonna hold whatever voltage is present and you know, not update until it gets another trigger. So I feel like this would be most easily explained if we were to take A, which is in LFO mode here, and go into volt per octave, and let's take a listen. <laughs> Right? So that's just going for us because there's no trigger on the meta input. Now if we were to put something in the meta input here, like let's say a... Nice little trigger there. You see we've got a stair-stepped triangle, right? We could also make it a attack envelope. if we put this fader in there, we can see it's only gonna update. It 
when it gets a trigger, right? So I think this is pretty nifty. And I like it quite a bit. Whoopsie daisy. Now, the sample and hold mode is probably gonna shine the most as sort of a way to, you know, use as a updating quantizer, or maybe we could use it as a really fun way to create random voltage with envelopes. But I think where it's most gonna shine is in self-patching between channels E and F and this other meta mode here. So that is a relatively brief overview of the meta mode. And I sincerely think that, you know, Neo Trinity is a great, wonderful control module, but with the inclusion of the meta input and the two dedicated inputs of channel E and F, it really brings it to the next level because what you can start to do is, is get really, really cool self-patching style um, setups, as well as interact with the rest of your modular in like really cool and interesting ways. You can have the Neo Trinity either control a bunch of other stuff or be influenced by it. So I really like that it's kind of bi-directional in that sense. And yeah. That's the meta mode. So now that we've kind of seen a functional overview of everything that's going on with the Neo Trinity and its envelope, CV, and LFO modes, as well as the meta input, let's take a look at some, uh, you know, some cool patches and stuff. All right, here's a really fun and kooky patch that I came up with that uses Neo Trinity as the nexus for pretty much all the modulation in this patch. And I think it's kind of a cool and unique way to do it. So here, I'm just gonna play it for you a little bit. And so that's kind of wild. I can get a lot of fun stuff out of that. But what I can also do is add another little layer of control here and then kind of go into this mode. this patch work. It sounds really dense and complex, but at the end of the day, it's not so difficult to understand. There's really just kind of three main elements. The first of which is the phonogene, which is playing this string of funny sounds that I've spliced up and really just kind of sound like this. <laughs> Right, and so what I'm doing is essentially shaping the tone with the dark matter. Introducing a little bit of feedback squeal. And then applying some delay with basil that's all being heavily modulated by the Neo Trinity. Right? Now where the magic happens is in this fader here. You'll notice that all of these lights are pretty much inactive. These channels are, for the most part, other than this one up here, doing nothing until they get the VCA signal 
from this fader, right? So that's pretty cool because what it lets you do is kind of have like a static sort of patch. And then you can change some effects, some, like little control bits. And then once you turn that fader up here, got assigned to the very speed, so I can kind of just leave it as a sort of just regular old CV offset. Or I could record in. And that's all there is to it. What we're really doing here at the end of the day is just using the CV Trinity to turn up or down a bunch of different sequences of modulation. And you know what? It's fun as heck. So this is kind of a wacky, infinite inspiration generator and I like it a lot. I like really kind of like fun, performative, non-linear patches like this. Put one of these all fleshes in there and then have it sending voltage from the same fader and you get some really cool stuff. We haven't even turned on the delay yet. And that's a patch. All right, so here's a patch that's pretty simple on its face. It's just a, you know, kind of fun keyboard patch here. But with the addition of Neo Trinity and some fun little waiver action here, we're gonna turn it into a really dense and complex modulatable fun arpeggiation machine here, right? So brief overview of the patch is, is we've got all of our waves coming out of pizza going into Waver, which is basically like a ring modulator, wave shaper, mixer, it's a fun time. And that signal is coming into our cinnamon and then going out of our Aikido. Our 1983, our MIDI interface here, is providing pitch information to the pizza, and it's also sending a trigger into Neo Trinity, which is triggering channels A and B, which are going to be my filter cutoff and VCA bias, respectively. So we can, you know, kind of, we can increase the envelope time of our VCA. We can increase the envelope time of our filter. between them, right? So that's pretty cool and we can, you know, like have some fun playing with like chord mode or something. And there's some additional modulation coming from Neo Trinity. Just some fun envelopes that are kind of mixing and mangling the waves in both the pizza and the waver here, you know. So it's it's kind of like a fun, longly transforming patch, a metamorpha patch, if I, you know, can coin a term. Basically, the craziness is coming from our B channel here, which is the main oscillator of pizza, so. 
and you turn it up, things are gonna get just kinda nasty there, right? But what I wanna illustrate is when we start to sequence or arpeggiate this patch, what we can start to do with the fun stuff that we've got going on in the Neo Trinity here. So let's get a little arpeggiation going here, maybe something like, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh... Right, so that sounds okay. Sounds pretty, pretty fine to me. We can modulate, you know, the uh, filter cutoff and we can change the envelope here, but we can also start to record in that modulation, right? Right, so that's, you know, instantly more interesting. And we can do the same thing on channel B, which is our VCA. Right, and so now we've got, you know, all sorts of fun modulation flying around, and we can have fun playing with our sound. Right, and then also, you may have noticed that I've got this mod input going into channel F here. And what this is, is uh, just controlling via meta VCA mode of channel F, a fun little envelope here, or LFO, excuse me. So this is... Gonna give us a little bit of that, you know, movement in that patch, and we can... Either turn it off or turn it all the way up. And we could even sequence that if we wanted. So let's get another little, oh, like. Whoa. And then we can bring that in or out as we so choose. And then we could turn off retrigger too on our VCA channel. Which is gonna be, you know, it's gonna make our triggers longer and not interrupt them when they're coming in from the 1983. And then we can get a really fun, just crazy, evolving, and wacky patch if we want to stop it. We can do whatever we so choose. So this is just a really fun, you know, kind of like whatever patch that is letting us control the rest of our system through processing a bunch of fun stuff with the Neo Trinity. And it doesn't end there. <clears throat> All right, here's one more patch because once again, I'm just having way too much fun with this thing. So what I wanna draw your attention to in this patch is the sound of this kick and the reactiveness of most of the LEDs on the Neo Trinity when I make a sound here, right? That is the sound of the pocket operator kick drum. It's beefy, yeah. 
and it's going through the Akari through the input gain there, and then I'm taking the envelope follower and going into the meta input of the Neo Trinity here. So what's really cool about this is I've got all of these channels, pretty much B, C, D, E, and F, all on CV mode. And what is cool is, is that they're on CV mode with the VCA meta mode. So every time I hit uh, something, the envelope follower is letting that voltage through, right? So what's cool here is, is that I can change the polarity. You see that on channel B up there? By spinning this knob here, I can change the polarity or the intensity of the output, right? So I've basically just turned this one envelope follower channel into like four envelope follower channels that I have complete control over. And I could sequence if I so chose. But the real magic of this patch here, uh, it was, I guess we should maybe just take a listen here. So here is our normal patch, right? And we can spin this little guy here and Mr. Mako wants to hear. And we can increase the amount of uh, signal that we are sending actually to the pizza oscillator. And we can tune that just to the dirty with B and C. And D is our uh, pitch. Right, so when we engage this sequencer, we're gonna get some really cool stuff. And we're gonna have control over the filter here. And I also just, uh, I put in the basil there too, because it's, uh, it's fun. It's, it's fun on a bun, if I do say so myself. And I did say so myself. So, let's take a listen. And with the uh, can here, I can choose where the signal's being sent. I could even overdrive this filter into self-oscillating range to get some really... of audio reactive patches are some of my favorite to play around with because you can also get really cool like just stuff to sample you know what I mean
My pocket operator died. that you've enjoyed this absolutely wild and wacky patch. I hope these patches have helped you uh, kind of see interesting and different ways that you could use the Neo Trinity in your own sort of patches here. Um, yeah, that's what I got for right now. All right, and that's the video for the Neo Trinity. And you know what? It is probably the longest video that I've ever made and I really tried to just kind of make it a, a fun, educational sort of video manual type of thing. I really learn best when someone who knows a little bit about whatever they're teaching kind of just sits down with me and walks me through top to bottom whatever they're, they're explaining. And so I kind of tried to get that sort of vibe into this video here. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm probably gonna make a bunch more videos because Bastel sent me a, a whole bunch of modules and uh, they are really, really fun. It's really kind of reinvigorated my love for modular synthesizers. Check out the links in the bio. You can pick up the Neo Trinity, support Bastel instruments, check out what they do, check out who they are. I love them, I believe in them. And uh, speaking of cool, enriching communities, you could uh, come on down, join the Discord and subscribe or whatever, join the soft space. Cause there's a ton of really cool people in there who are also sharing music, sharing knowledge, and uh, yeah, talking about weird stuff. And what is your deal, bro? Okay, well, this guy's, uh, he's got uh, machinations for, uh, you know, macadamia nuts, maybe? Probably not. He wants some treats. I don't know, man. Uh, I, I don't know what to say here. I'm really bad at outros. So, uh, yeah, if you stuck around to the very end, go ahead and comment something cool in the comment box. Something about Magnificent Mr. Mako, because uh, he decided to force his way up on my lap here. Um, this video is probably way too long at this point. Shout out to John Dinger, Patrick, the Vatslav, Pete Edwards. I love you guys. Um, also shouts out to my wonderful, amazing, beautiful partner. And also shouts out to the kitties, Minka and Cleo. And shouts out to all the homies up in the Discord. I don't know if you guys want your names said, but, uh, yeah, those people are f cool. And uh, we'll see you next time.